Welcome to the Hughes Communications Lab of the University of Maryland at College Park. I'm Alejandra Mercado. I'm Associate Director for the Master's in Telecommunications program at the University of Maryland at College Park. I'm also an instructor, a mentor, an administrator, and a lab coach. The Hughes Lab provides hands-on experience where students learn to work with the Edis B210 software-defined radio as well as the GNU Radio Companion, which is a front end to the GNU Radio libraries for digital communications and signal processing. We often hear from our students, you pass the digital communications placement exam so you don't have to take that course, but you're conflicted because you really want the chance to play with the software-defined radios in the lab. What to do? First of all, congratulations. If you pass the exam, then you get an extra elective to boast on your resume. Secondly, our digital communications course is not the only place where we offer SDR labs, so you'll get more chances to take electives where you get to work with software-defined radios. But what if those aren't the electives you want? It's not expensive to have a do-it-at-home SDR. For as little as $20 to $30, you can buy your own SDR receiver, which you can connect to your home computer. There are many ways you can do this, so let's look, just look at one example. For about $23, I purchased a NOAA Elect Mini SDR. You can buy this online from NOAAelect.com or Amazon or Walmart or Fishpond or any number of online retailers. Let's first ask ourselves, what is a software-defined radio, and how is it different from a conventional radio? In a regular conventional radio, uh, typically the modulation is going to be fixed. For example, it's only designed to be an FM radio receiver or an AM radio receiver, or only it will work with modulation types like double sideband suppressed carrier or maybe only QPSK. A software-defined radio will do whatever modulation you program it to do, FM, double sideband suppressed carrier, QPSK, whatever you need, it can do it. In a regular radio, the frequency band it works on is specific for a certain type of service, uh, FM or AM radio frequencies, or television, or perhaps GPS. It will just work on the frequency bands that it provides those services. In a software-defined radio, there is a large frequency band, and you can work anywhere on that band. So it could be FM radio frequencies or AM radio frequencies, but you could also program it to work on GPS radio frequencies or Wi-Fi or whatever you program it to do. In the case of a regular conventional radio, you have fixed filtering and signal processing and protocol stacks for a specific type of service, be it Wi-Fi or GPS or television or whatever. In a software-defined radio, it's up to you to program all the protocols and signal processing and modulation for the whatever uh, process, whatever service you're interested in. It's GPS or Wi-Fi or television or OFDM or whatever you want. It's up to you to program it. For the mini SDR that I got, uh, it turns out that the frequency range that this little SDR will work on is about 25 megahertz to about 1.75 gigahertz with a real-time bandwidth of 500 kilohertz. And what that means is that if I look at the spectrum over which this software-defined radio will work, I can work at any kind of signal that is equal to or less than 500 kilohertz bandwidth, and it can have a carrier anywhere from 25 megahertz to 1.75 gigahertz. So what the, this SDR looks like, it's a little bit bigger than a thumb drive, so I connected the antenna to the dongle and then connected by a USB to my computer. And what happens then is that the RF signal goes through the antenna into the SDR where a Rafael Micro R820T digital tuner will down convert it from passband to low intermediate frequency, which is typically a few megahertz, and then transmits the low intermediate frequency signal to the Realtek RTL2832U demodulator. Uh, the demodulator, by the way, like gives, does give feedback to the digital tuner, like automatic gain control, and, and so on. And then that demodulator basically will send the signal through the USB interface into the laptop where I can deal with it, um, with, for example, with MATLAB if I want to. In this example, I'm working with software that anyone can download and use for free. So in our example, we're going to be using Cubic SDR. This is what I got in the mail. 
the SDR dongle, the antenna, and a card that directs me to the web page where I can get started. In my internet browser, I went to the web page that the little card directed me to, and it shows me how I can install the drivers for a Windows installation, which is my case. First of all, I had to plug in the little SDR dongle into a USB port in the computer, and then I actually uh, ran the uh, driver installation. Uh, once you do that, it's going to give you a drop-down menu where you can see all the devices that are connected to your different USB ports. Make sure that you choose one that either shows the USB ID of OBDA2838 or OBDA2832, as it says in the instructions. If you don't know which one that is, that's okay. You can go ahead and click on any one of them, and when you do that, the USB ID will populate over here. And when you find the correct USB ID number, then you know that that's the SDR dongle that's connected to that uh, USB port. Once you've done that, all you have to do is uh, plug, you know, press the button that says reinstall or install driver, and it'll just take a couple of minutes, and it's done. Next, we need software to control our SDR. They direct you to several options right here. If you're a UMD student, then you have the use of a MATLAB license with all toolboxes. But if you'd rather install something free and permanent for your home computer, you can use Cubic SDR, which is what I want to install in my desktop. So I just click the installer and run it. Now the Cubic SDR is installed, we're going to press Start to run it. The program searches for radios. We can see our RTL2832U device in the list. Click on it to turn the SDR on as a receiver. What are we seeing? Well, the antenna is receiving RF signal across 500 kilohertz spectrum centered at 2.89 gigahertz. It's down converting it to a low intermediate frequency, then sampling the signal, and then passing those samples to my computer, which then calculates the fast Fourier transform from the samples and displays the instantaneous frequency spectrum in this gray box. Below, we see the waterfall spectrum, which allows us to see a history of the spectrum over a few seconds. And I can regulate how much history I want to see by hovering over this green bar and using the roller on my mouse to regulate the waterfall speed. Right now, I want to see an FM radio station. FM radio stations each use 200 kilohertz bandwidth, so let me make sure that my SDR sampling rate is bigger than that by clicking on this menu. I'll just set it to a little over 1 megahertz. Now, let me tell the SDR that I want a 200 kilohertz bandwidth for my receiver. I do this by clicking the mouse over the digits of the bandwidth and using my mouse roller to change the digits. My SDR receiver is now set to the correct bandwidth and the correct sampling rate. I can set the SDR to behave like one of several kinds of receivers in Cubic SDR. But in this case, I want an FM receiver, so I click on that from the different menu items. Now I need to set the center or carrier frequency for my receiver. I know we have a couple of radio stations near College Park with central frequencies around 90 megahertz. So let me use the tuning bar to shift the center frequency of my receiver to some value around there. I can click on each digit and use my mouse roller to change the values. There we are. I can see a lot of energy in the frequencies right around 90.1 MHz. Radiolocator.com tells me that this is WCSP Radio FM. The SDR is receiving RF signals, but it has not yet started to demodulate anything. I'm going to create an FM channel receiver with center frequency right here. I just hover the mouse over the waterfall window over the central frequency I want and click. Uh, going forward, I would think about um, whether or not there are 
any chances for any sort of renewed I can use this green bar to adjust the, the swell which suppresses the part example. of the received signal whose signal uh, strength falls below a certain level you can see if I raise the squelch beyond a certain level, I start squelching the actual desired FM signal, so best not to do this too much. With AM modulation, this would be useful to suppress noise, though it doesn't really decrease the impact of noise Water, in what we hear, since we FM receivers it, have the advantage of the uh, capture effect. There are more opportunities, uh, I can also for, change the bandwidth of my FM sort of receiver. If I increase it, the signal-to-noise uh, ratio of the receiver really improves, the but we could get adjacent channel season. interference from other uh, channels. One other thing is whether or not there is any chance, again, to have any discussions about prospective changes to the Senate rules. So one of the thing, one of the reasons why the Republican If I reduce the bandwidth too so much, then the desired signal gets distorted, as we can hear. Is the idea that sometimes they've wanted changes in the past to occur in the next Congress, when you don't necessarily know who is going to benefit uh, from those changes. So I don't know if there will be any discussions or not. From the on that file front, menu, we I can tell Cubic SDR to turn off my programmable radio dongles. Around election. Spectral analysis, bandwidth, carrier frequencies, noise, sampling, FM capture effect, and filtering are all some of the topics we discuss in digital communications. If you like this subject, then maybe taking ENTS 622 would be interesting for you. If you really want other electives, then you can still play with other SDRs at home. Here at the Masters in Telecommunications program, we strongly believe that the best student experience involves hands-on labs and projects to equip our graduates to excel in the workplace. One of the things that attracts students to our program is that we are very industry focused. We keep a constant tab on the skills that hiring agents want and we make sure that we offer courses and labs that provide these skills.